New GDP data released at the end of May is suggesting that Canada's economy is firing on all cylinders once again. And that could mean that interest rate hikes may be just around the corner, with some economists suggesting they could come as early as this month. And at the same time, some economists are now revising their predictions that there would be a mild recession in 2023. And those two things combined with the fact that Toronto real estate prices jumped as much as 14% in the first quarter could mean that the Bank of Canada is going to increase interest rates far sooner than expected. And this is obviously all being reflected in fixed mortgage rate pricing as we saw fixed rates increase substantially in the month of May. And my expectation is that they'll probably continue to increase throughout June. And in this video, I'm going to discuss exactly what's happening in the world of interest rates. I'm going to talk about the challenges that the Bank of Canada now faces and what to watch out for in their June meeting. And I'm going to provide you with the most recent mortgage interest rates. But before we get into it, my name is Nolan Mathias. And if you want to thrive financially, this is the place for you. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and hit the like button so more people like you can see this video. And don't forget, you can still get my new book, Mortgage Secrets, for free. All you have to do is pay the shipping and handling. Just go to mortgagesecrets.ca in order to get your copy, and I'm going to continue to give these away for free until we're through our very first print run, which is about halfway sold out. Okay, so let's discuss what's happening with interest rates, because the GDP numbers came through higher than expected at 3.1%. This was greater than the 2.5% that Stats Canada was predicting. And what does this mean for you? Well, this means that the gross domestic product the amount of goods that were being produced in the economy was significantly greater than what was expected, which is an indication that the economy is still running hotter than the Bank of Canada would like it to. And subsequently, this has many economists predicting that the Bank of Canada could increase interest rates as early as June. Now, that's probably not what is going to happen, though, because the Bank of Canada over the last couple of years has very much taken up the practice of talking about what they're going to do before they do it. So in other words, giving some warning that changes are coming rather than just dropping interest rate increases or interest rate hikes on the Canadian economy. So while it's possible that the Bank of Canada may increase interest rates, what I'd actually be watching for is changes to their language, specifically any sort of indications that they may start increasing interest rates in July or August. And now we have some economists like Doug Porter from BMO, who's a very, very good economist, suggesting that we may not see a full-fledged recession in this cycle. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that interest rates are going to go up, but it definitely lessens the likelihood that interest rates were going to come down. Now, on top of all this GDP talk, we also have real estate prices starting to go up again, with Toronto real estate prices going up as much as 14.5% in some areas over the course of the first quarter. Now, obviously, that has an inflationary effect of its own, but what's surprising here is that the Canadian real estate market continues to rebound. And for those expecting a full-on crash at the beginning of this year, well, it just never came. And while there may be one around the corner, there's also a likelihood that it may not be around the corner as well. Making the best time for somebody to buy a house in Canada right now, the time that they know personally that they will be able to reasonably afford it for the next 5-10 to 10 years. Because if there's anything that this market has proven, it's that nobody can predict the future. And when it seems so obvious that things like real estate prices are going to crash, quite often the opposite happens. Now, that leads us into our conversation about what's going on with interest rates right now. And in May, leading into June, they've gone up quite significantly. And I suspect that they are probably going to continue to go up here in the next couple of weeks. And if you take a look at the five-year government bond yield, you can see that the bond yield has been steadily increasing since about the beginning of May. In fact, you can go back to the middle of April and see that it was very much trying to break out at that point as well. Now, we've seen the bond yield come down a little bit in the last week or so, but this is largely due to the fact that economies outside of Canada aren't performing as well as expected, and bond yields worldwide have pretty much come down. But that doesn't mean that bond yields in Canada will remain low, especially if the economy continues to outperform. Now, of course, we talk about five-year bond yields because these are the bond prices that fixed rate mortgages are priced off of. So in other words, when bond yields go up, fixed rates go up, and when bond yields go down, fixed rates go down. So now jumping into interest rates for the month of June, currently right now, we've seen interest rates go up. Now, over the last couple of months, these charts have pretty much been all green as interest rates continue to go down and down and down. Well, now we're starting to see that trend reverse. And what you'll notice is that on the fixed rate mortgages, there's going to be a lot of red. And of course, these are the five-year full feature mortgages from what we call the A-plus lenders. So these are better than the bank lenders, primarily because they are the great products that the banks sell 
albeit they come with significantly lower penalties. These are mortgages from companies like First National, MCAP, CMLS, who aren't household names and therefore have to have better products because they can't skate on their brand names and their huge marketing budgets. And if you're looking at getting a mortgage in the next little while, you want to make sure that you have lots of flexibility in case interest rates at some point do start to come down. And I talk about that quite extensively in my Mortgage Secrets book. So as you can see, insured rates have come up by 0.35%. The current going rate for an insured mortgage, which is the mortgage that has the least risk for a bank because it's insured, is now 4.94%. So it's still under that 5% mark. However, it is just slightly under it, unlike last month where we were seeing rates around 4.5%. Now, when you put 20% down, you get to 5.14%. These are the riskiest mortgages for the bank because these are the mortgages that have the highest loan to value amounts without insurance. So the banks accordingly price these ones the highest. Now, when you start getting into 25% down, you're looking at a pretty similar rate. And then as you start to get to 30 and 35% down, the rates start to go back down to 4.94% because at this point, the risk parity compared to insured mortgages starts to level out. So in other words, banks don't expect people who have 35% down payments to walk away. And then if you're looking for a mortgage that's over a million dollars, you're looking to refinance, you're looking for a 30 year amortization, these are what's called uninsurable mortgages. So the lenders don't have the option to insure these portfolios, making them the most expensive mortgages you can get. And these are now priced at 5.14%, which is actually a pretty good deal because these are typically priced a lot higher than the 20% down mortgages. Now, moving into variable rates, you'll see that these are pretty much the same as they were last month. Prime is still 6.7%, which means on a full featured mortgage, no bona fide sale clauses, no big penalties, you're looking at 5.8%. So obviously these are priced significantly higher than fixed rate mortgages. We don't see a lot of people choosing variable rate mortgages at this time. Then putting 20% down, you're looking at prime minus 0.55. At 25% down, similar rate. At 30% down, you're looking at prime minus 0.75. And at greater than 35% down, you're looking at prime minus 0.9 again. And then for over a million, 30-year amortizations, refinances, you're looking at prime minus 0.2. So in other words, 6.5%. So variable rate mortgages, if you're looking for one of those uninsurable products right now, just are priced way out of the market and make almost zero cents compared to their five-year fixed counterparts. Now, one thing we typically do on these videos is we talk about the discount mortgage rates. And in today's video, I'm not going to go into them in detail. I will explain what they are. So these are mortgages that are cheaper than full featured mortgages. And the reason why is because they often come with a catch. It can be something like a bona fide sale clause, which means you can't refinance or switch to a lender midterm, even if you pay the penalty. The reason why it's important not to have this type of mortgage is because if interest rates do go down, you're stuck with these lenders until the end of the five-year term. And as a result, well, you're pretty much stuck paying a higher rate. So we tend to avoid these like the plague. Every once in a while, we have a client who absolutely insists on getting the lowest rate. But once you understand the difference between discount mortgages and full featured mortgages and realize that the difference in price is pretty much a cup of coffee a week, depending on how big your mortgage is, most people will choose a full featured mortgage for the flexibility, knowing that not having the flexibility that comes with a full featured mortgage could cost them tens of thousands of dollars down the road instead of just $100 or $200 per month. So I'm going to keep these up here and then I'm going to show you the variable rate mortgages. If you want to pause on those and take a look at the discount variable rates, go ahead and do that. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this video discussing what they are. So here's the variable discount mortgages. You can see not a ton of changes there. That's widely to be expected. If the Bank of Canada does increase interest rates, expect that these interest rates will change to the tune of whatever the Bank of Canada adjusts their rates to. Now, if you are in the market to buy a property over the next little while, we put together a video on why Canadian real estate prices aren't going down. I'm gonna to link to it right here. Make sure you check out that one because it's important, especially if you're gonna be getting into the market in the next little while.